All right, let's break it down. So we talked a lot about the pictures in my last uh, module. I told you why they were blurry. So now I've got lots of different examples of ways that we can manipulate shutter speed to create different looks and feel. And this time I've included the actual camera settings so that we can talk through it and I can tell you why the picture looks like it looks. This is why I always want you to include your camera settings when you post your assignments because I can look at the camera settings and I can tell you why your picture looks like, looks like it does. Seems kind of weird, but it's very, very revealing and I can give you tips and pointers on if something's wrong, how to change it, but I can't do that if I don't know what the settings are. So let's go ahead. We're going to start with a very simple and straightforward example. And this is freezing the motion. So here you can see it's a simple beach shot. Um, it's a bright sunny day. I have my ISO at 100 because I don't need to make my camera more sensitive to light. There's light everywhere. I've got it wide open because I generally like to shoot that way. I like a blurry background. Um, so you can see that my shutter speed is at one, one two thousandth of a second. So very quick, it freezes their hair, it freezes their extremities. You can see their feet are tack sharp, their hands are tack sharp, their body is not blurred as they're jumping in the air. So that's very straightforward. Here I've got, I'm at a football game. You can see my settings are at f2.8. My focus is on the quarterback in the uh, kind of upper left. I am focused on him, so you can see the players closest to me are out of focus, and that's not because of the shutter speed, that's because of the aperture. The aperture is very shallow. So I've got the quarterback in focus, and I've got it at 1 800th of a second, so you can see all the players to my right are completely in focus. I'm not getting any extremity blur or anything. And this was at night, pretty good lights, but so I do have my ISO at 800. This was for the eclipse, and we were actually using a filter that blocked out pretty much all the light because just like you can burn your eyes out looking into the eclipse, you can also burn out your camera. So we were using a protective filter to protect the, um, the camera's sensor so we didn't burn it out. So we had to let we had to leave the shutter open one fourth of a second, and we also had to bump our ISO way up in order to let enough light in because we were actually blocking it out via the aperture to get a very sharp, sharp picture of the eclipse, um, as well as the filter that was on there so that we didn't burn our eyes or our camera. Here's a really interesting example. I don't think either of these pictures are awesome. That's not why I'm showing them to you. But I wanna show you how you can manipulate your shutter speed to show motion or freeze motion, and it gives you an entirely different picture. So if you look at the picture on the right, he's playing a drum, and I, the shutter speed is at 1 250th of a second. So it appears that he's just playing a still drum, like he's just going boom, 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 and he's hitting all the different circles, not a big deal. When in reality, he is playing a spinning drum, which is a lot harder than playing a still drum. So both of these pictures, the drums were spinning, but because I used a higher shutter speed on the one on the right, it appears still in the picture. But on the left, I took my shutter speed down to 1 80th of a second. So you can actually see that the drums are spinning. And because the two people and the background are not moving, they're not blurry. They're not moving that much, and 1 80th was enough to freeze them. So what a difference that makes. So this is a way you can creatively use shutter speed to show motion. Now fireworks, let's talk about fireworks. Fireworks, if you've ever taken a picture of it, if you, take, if you use too fast of a shutter speed, you'll just get a short little firework. You won't get the whole stream of light. That's because the shutter speed is taking such a small fraction of time, it's not allowing that light to paint across the sky. So here you can see I'm using a really high ISO, 6400, but I'm using a low, uh, a low shutter speed, 1 30th of a second. And if I had a tripod, I probably would have tried to go even lower because it lets you paint that stream of light. But I thought this was a pretty good example because it got the whole length of the firework going off. And if I would have used a fast shutter speed, I would have just gotten a little dinky part of that and it wouldn't have looked like a firework at all. 
Now here, this is called panning, and it's a little bit more of an advanced technique, so we're not going to talk a lot about it, but I wanted to show you the effect. So here, I am following the biker with my camera. So I am actually, I'm going like this. I'm starting here, he's over here. I'm getting focus, and I'm moving with him, okay? That's why the background is a streak, but he's in focus. So I'm using a lower shutter speed than I would normally do for a moving biker. But the benefit of this is because the background is blurry, kind of like a swoosh, I can see that he's moving. Also, look at his spokes and look at his zip wheels. If, these, if it just said zip and it was perfectly in focus and the spokes were stopped and perfectly in focus, you would have no idea that he was on a moving bike. So here, I'm able to use my shutter speed and the motion to show that he's on a moving bike and he's riding fast. So it gives it that feeling of motion. So you generally want to do this with race cars or um, bikers or anything that's moving um, because you don't want it to feel like it's just sitting there. You want it to feel like it's moving even though it's just a 2D picture. Here I was at the uh, Freedom Tower. There's a little mall underneath and it's got some cool architecture and there was a railing that I set my camera on. And I knew here that I wanted to create kind of like a feel like there were people moving through the terminal. So I didn't want to get a static picture, but I wanted to make sure that the architecture was in focus. So I took my aperture all the way to f22. Why did I do that? Well, look at the very front white little curves all the way to the back. They're completely in focus. From front to back, my picture is in focus. The only thing that's not in focus is anything that's moving. And that's where my low um, eighth of a second shutter speed comes in. It's allowing to get a little bit of that motion. So it just gives that feeling like people are moving and hustling through New York. Here's another one. I was on the High Line in New York and there was a little railing. So I used the railing as well with my self timer because I could not hold, this is two seconds. So one, 1,000, two, 1,000. So if you ever hear your shutter go click, click, that's a slow shutter. You can hear it open, you can hear it close. Sometimes you feel like it's broken. It's not, it's just staying open. So this was a, uh, so I put this again at F22 and you can see everything's in focus from the crosswalk all the way to the buildings in the background. And by leaving the shutter open for two seconds, the cars disappear into nothing but streaming lights. So I'm just, so I can tell the cars are moving. You can see the parked cars are perfectly in focus. The moving cars are streaks of light. If you look at the crosswalk over on the right, you can tell there's people crossing the street because they're all blurry. It gives that sense of motion and busyness in the busy city, like there's action. It's not just a still shot. And another cool thing, if you look at the street lights, the headlights, anywhere there's a light, because I'm at F22, remember we talked about starbursts? We're getting a really cool starburst. So we're getting kind of a double effect here. We're getting starburst and we're getting streaks of light wherever there's cars moving and we're getting motion blur wherever there's people moving. So this is a lot of fun to play with. Here I've got a Christmas tree. I was shooting for a local Christmas uh, concert and I have everything in focus. I'm at F16, I was using a tripod here. So I set the tripod up, I bumped up my ISO to 2000 because I wanted all those colors, the Christmas lights, I wanted the string lights in the background to come through, I wanted all those red tree lights to light up, I wanted all the ambient light to come in in the shot and I slowed my shutter speed way down. And you can tell that I did that because look at the people that are, that are walking. Anybody that's moving is blurry. And so again, it gives it that sense of motion. You don't have that static feel. Um, so I'm using this creatively and intentionally. They're not blurred. Everything that's not supposed to be blurred is perfectly in focus. Everything that is supposed to be blurred feels like movement and action and a busy Christmas um, event. Here, this is my front yard. I put this on the railing of my porch and I bumped the ISO up to 1600 and I have uh, my aperture set at f14 because I wanted those little starbursts. So I wanted, I knew that I wanted the little starbursts. 
So I put it at a really high aperture. So in order to do that, I had to bump up my ISO to let more light in and I had to really slow down my shutter because it was pitch black outside. So I had my shutter open for four seconds. So think about this. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand. That's how long my shutter was open. So it went click and four seconds later, it clicked again. So it would be impossible to handhold this. This is why this was on my porch railing on a self timer. I focused it, I hit the button, and then I let it go, and it took the picture. And so then I get the double effect of the starbursts on the lights, and I get all the nice ambient light from the lights in my front yard. Here, I just took this picture in Prague, and this was a very, very, very busy touristy area. It was the King Charles Bridge. It was crowded, all right? I don't recommend it in the middle of the afternoon. What I did, I had a little teeny uh, travel tripod. I screwed it into my camera. I had it on shutter priority. I turned the shutter way, way down slow. I had my ISO down at 100, and I popped it down on the ground. I had my self timer. I hit the button, and then I hit the button once the walk sign uh, went, and everybody started crossing the street. And so this, I think, the motion blur in this picture tells me a few things. One, it tells me it was really busy. It tells me it was crowded. There was people moving and crossing the street trying to get by me. I think it also gives it a certain sense of anonymity, like being lost in a crowd. So these are ways that you can use your shutter speed creatively um, to tell a story. And so I think that's what this particular picture does. Um, and I did it intentionally. I did it, um, I sat under the crosswalk against a bar so nobody would run over me or step on my camera. This is in Prague as well. We climbed up to the um, old um, town hall tower and you could take pictures up there. And so what I did here, once again, I bumped my ISO way up because it was really dark out. I actually um, increased my aperture to eight because I wanted things to be in focus from front to back. I did not want any blur. No, I wanted a really large depth of field because I wanted to show the city. And so then I had to slow my shutter speed way down and I put it, there was like a window. And so I set my camera in the window, once again, used a self timer, let go of it so nothing would shake, and I got a perfectly in focus, clear picture of the city of Prague as seen from the tower. Um, and that's how I did that. All right, so just to review, we talked about this in the last lesson, but I think it bears repeating. So remember, for children, let's try to shoot at 1 200, 1 250th of a second. You're going to have to do, you're going to have to see how quick they are. Sports, your ideal is 1 1000th. Or above but if you're in a dark um, you're outside or in a dark gym you're gonna have, probably want to shoot for 1 500th and you're just going to adjust your ISO up or down um, until you can get the proper exposure but if you go any lower than 1 500th you're gonna start to get really blurry photos and not in a good way um, remember don't go lower than the length of your lens so if you're using a 300 millimeter lens you're gonna want to go no lower than 1 300th if you're using that for sports, then it's still 1 500th or 1 1,000th. 1, um, for long exposures, you're going to want to use a tripod and a self-timer. We talked about that several times. And then always use the back of your camera to zoom in and double check your focus. Don't wait till the end of the night and you realize that every single picture was out of focus before you check. Check if it's out of focus. Don't freak out. Make adjustments. Try again. That's the mistake that I made in my early years is I would just shoot, shoot, shoot. I'd get so excited. I'd get home. They're all out of focus because I wasn't slowing down to pay attention to whether my pictures were in focus. So when I go back to look for pictures, for examples, for this class, I find so many pictures that were out of focus. Glad they have them. A lot of them are really nice, but a lot of them are really blurry. And I didn't really notice that. So I'm here to save you that trouble. All right, go ahead. I want you to do your assignment. I've got one more quick lesson on shutter priority, and then that will wrap it up for week three. Thanks, and I hope you are learning a ton.